take this uh, white chips economics, and we're going to watch a scene from white chips, where there's an auction that takes place um, in the movie. Um, and basically, in the movie, uh, there's a, what's called a standard English auction. Um, and this is, if I use the term auction, no one in this room would think of anything other than an English auction. This is where the price starts low, the auctioneer raises the price up, and eventually uh, many of the bidders go away, and there's just one or two left, and then finally the one bidder bids the most, and they win. That's an English auction, we're all familiar with that. The movie uses the English auction as its rationing mechanism, but there's a catch. The catch is, in this movie, the auction process gets manipulated. So what I want you to pay attention to here is how much would the guy have paid if the auction had not been manipulated and what does he end up having to pay because the price gets, gets higher than we otherwise would think it should get. So we want to pay attention to the final price he pays and what he would have paid and then we'll come back and talk about that because it ends up being very important in terms of the way you design an auction. Let me get the clip up for you. So what makes the scene uh, useful for our purposes is it's a traditional English auction where the price rises. Um, but we learn a little bit about the price he would have had to pay against his actual willingness to pay. So what would he have paid without any manipulation? What did you guys come up with? $1,000. Not a lot, but you know, but at least by the standards of this auction, uh, a good chunk of money. What does he end up paying? $50,000. So we know he's willing to pay $50,000, but if it had just been a standard English auction without any manipulation, he would have gotten Tiffany for the $1,000. An amazing deal. Why would he have gotten such a good deal? Well, because there wasn't anyone else who was interested in bidding against him, so he gets a really low price. That'll happen in an English auction if there's not the necessary number of bidders and there's no competitive pressure, uh, you just get a, a fantastic deal um, and uh, the market really fails to find what you were willing to pay. There's an alternative though. All right, here's the part that makes this fun. There's the standard English auction we're familiar with and there's also something called a Dutch auction. This is the part you want to make sure you write down because I'm sure you already understand this, but the Dutch auction is different. Dutch auction actually takes place and it's like the complete opposite of an English auction. Not only are there not a lot of bidders, there's only one bid, and instead of the prices going from low to high, they go from high down. And when the price falls down, and the first person says, I'll take it, it's over. It's like really boring in that sense, right? Hollywood would never use an example of a Dutch auction uh, in a movie. I mean, like, nothing's happening, yeah, done. And then, all, then you move on, okay? So you don't get any of the excitement. But the fact that you don't get any of the excitement doesn't mean we shouldn't take it seriously. Here's why a Dutch auction is such an incredible instrument. Now imagine that you're this guy and Tiffany comes up. We already know he's willing to pay 50 grand. The question becomes, how much would he pay if we put him in a bind created by a Dutch auction. So, so imagine that the auctioneer says, who wants Tiffany, who will give us $100,000? Now there's not a single person in that room who will say yes at $100,000. So they drop the price down. How about 75,000? Nobody's doing anything. How about 50 grand? Now we know this guy would pay 50, but the auctioneer just got to 50, so he's not gonna bite on 50, but now they drop it down to 40 grand. He would pay 50 price is 40. He could say, I'll take her. And guess what? He would have gotten her, right? He could say, and he doesn't though, if he waits, he says, I'll wait for it to drop a little bit further, maybe to 30, or 25, or 20, or 15, or 10, or 5, or 3, or 1,000. At some point, somebody else in the room is going to get Tiffany instead of him. And that's the risk he runs with letting the price fall too far. And so in the Dutch auction, you put the person who has a really high value in an incredible bind because the only way you can be sure to win is to bid an amount pretty close to 
what you think the prize is worth, because the longer you wait in order to get the better deal, the greater the risk somebody else will end up getting Tiffany in this case, even though their value is what? Way below what you would have paid. So, so you don't want that to happen, so therefore you tend to bid fairly close to what you think uh, the true value is uh, in order to avoid somebody else winning the prize. And it's that bind that makes the Dutch auction a really unique way of um, trying to assess what somebody's willing to pay. So it says up here, we do a real Dutch auction in class. I have brought some stuff for you guys to consider. I have here in front of me, well, let's see, I've got... Uh, I've got two donuts from Dunkin' Donuts right here. I've got a chocolate with sprinkles, and I've got an old-fashioned donut right there. And I've supplemented my donuts from Dunkin' Donuts, because uh, this is a 415 class, and I wasn't sure how excited you guys would be about donuts, with a fresh David's cookie that I picked up as well, chocolate chip cookie. So i got a chocolate chip cookie. I've got two donuts in here. And since that would be good, but not great just by itself, I have also inside this, I have kept some Penn State milk cold. Right, I got cold milk, I got a chocolate chip cookie, and I got two donuts right here, and I've got some cups in case uh, you want to bid on this with a friend so you both can jointly enjoy it, uh, and some plates and some napkins, and I will bring it all to your seat for you to enjoy right here in this classroom. That's the way it's going to work. But we're going to do this as a Dutch auction because I want to find the one person in this room who's willing to pay more than anybody else. And I think that doing a Dutch auction will give me the best result. And so I'm going to do it that way so you guys can experience this firsthand. So I'm going to start here. What? Do, do I accept line cash? Uh, do I look like I accept line cash? No, it's not, uh, not going to happen. Uh, but I tell you what, his point is well taken. Um, I, 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 will, I will extend credit to anyone in this room, meaning that you only have to pay me by the end of the semester. Fair enough. Okay, so no, nobody should fair. feel. That's not, that's not fair. Why? Because then the person, the person is going to say, "I want it," right when you say the highest number, and then you're never going to get the money from them. Oh, but that's so wrong. I know, I, but I absolutely are wrong. will get the money. Suppose that you are that person, okay. right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to burn your face into my memory, and then when you get to the first exam, I'm going to just have a gentle reminder about you haven't paid me yet. And then the second exam, there'll be a more forceful reminder. And then when we get to the last exam, and you have to pay me. Guess what grade you're getting in this class? <laughs> You were going to pay, all right? So I'm not at all worried about getting the money in this case. I'm happy to extend the credit. That there were, therefore, everyone has an opportunity to jump in if they want to here today, uh, knowing that uh, they have uh, three months more uh, to pay. Any questions? You real? Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I wish I had little Wayne tickets, all right? I don't have them. Okay. Um, you do realize I'm going to start this auction at an incredibly high price. So if you don't really understand what's going on, and you jump in and you say, I want it, at the first time I blurt something out, you will owe me what? A ridiculous amount of money. Okay, so, and, and I will hold you to that. Okay, so everybody's good? Dutch auction? Not an English auction? Everybody understands? Cool, okay. So here we go. I, all I need to hear from you is, Dirk, I want it when I get to the magic price. First person to say that, I'll uh, get it. Who would give me I would deliver all of this good stuff back there for $10, so let me get that back there. Right to his seat. That's the way it works. Okay. You owe me a dollar. Okay. I'll have to collect that dollar at some point right now. Yeah. See, I'm just focusing right here. Okay. All right, so very good. Now, 
Uh, he gave me nine, but he said he'd give me the extra one. Um, did he get a good deal or a bad deal? Horrible deal. Horrible. What do you guys think? Good. So what do you think my what do you think my costs were? Let's just go through the costs, okay? So uh, two donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, dollar uh, forty-one. Milk from the creamery, dollar twenty-nine. David's cookie, dollar fifty-nine. Add that up, about four twenty. All right. So my costs are four twenty. He paid me ten. Good deal or bad deal? Uh, <laughs> well, hold up. I can't get this year any time I want. <laughs> what? I can't just get donuts any time I want. That's awesome. That is right. Right? He actually, even though our, the cost basis is less than $5, and the transactions price is 10 that's not the full sum of the costs incurred here. Right? If you think about what happened, I was the one who went to Dunkin' Donuts. I'm the one who brought the donuts here. I'm the one who went and got the David's cookie. I went and got the milk. Right? I kept it cold. I brought it to his seat. All right? So there's all kinds of service here as well, and that service is captured in the, the $10. All we know is that he was willing to pay 10 along with a couple other guys who were willing to pay $10 as well. And so therefore, they, he must have some consumer surplus here. He's probably, you know, he's, he benefits from that the same way that I benefit from that. That's the way it works out. You know, and that's the neat part about this process is I get to do what? I get to find somebody who would pay me a lot. Yeah. Doesn't it also depend how, how hungry he is also? Oh, it absolutely depends on how hungry he is. He looks like he's been hungry and thirsty back there, so he's uh, going at it. <laughs>